Hello my friends, γεια σας φίλοι μου! This is the second part of the series about the Greek family. In the first part, I will have the link below, we saw a little boy, Stefanos, talking about his family. Today, we are going to look at the same family and talk about the special relations that exist between the members of the family. So, it is still a vocabulary lesson, we are going to learn a lot of new words, but of course, always in sentences. Today, I am going to talk about Stefano's family in third person. Let's begin! Ο Χρήστος και η Χριστίνα είναι σύζυγοι. Ο Χρήστος και η Χριστίνα είναι σύζυγοι. Χρήστος and Χριστίνα are husband and wife, are partners. Σύζυγος is a noun that can be masculine or feminine. It has the same forms both in masculine and feminine. The only thing that changes, of course, is always the article. And it means husband or wife. So, you can say, αυτός είναι ο σύζυγός μου. This is my husband. By using the definite article ο in the masculine gender, you mean this is my husband. If you say, αυτή είναι η σύζυγός μου, you mean this is my wife. So, we have the same word. And of course, in Greek, you can always say something very much simpler. Αυτός είναι ο άντρας μου. This is my man. Or, αυτή είναι η γυναίκα μου. This is my woman. It doesn't sound bad or impolite in Greek. It is much more common than using the noun σύζυγος. Σύζυγος is slightly more formal. You will probably use it in an official document. But you can always use it in an everyday conversation. So, let's continue. In this sentence, ο Χρήστος και η Χριστίνα είναι σύζυγοι means that they are husband and wife, they are partners. And of course, it is the noun σύζυγος in the plural. Ο Χρήστος και η Χριστίνα είναι παντρεμένοι. Χρήστος and Χριστίνα are married. Παντρεμένοι. Married. Just like in English, παντρεμένοι is a participle of the verb παντρεύω. Παντρεύω means I wed, I join two other people. It doesn't mean I get married, but I marry somebody else as a priest or a best man or I don't know, a matchmaker, but it is a verb in the active voice. If we want to make it mean I am getting married, I marry someone, we have to transform it into the passive voice and change, of course, the ending. But this is for another lesson. All we have to know is padremenos is the passive participle of the verb padrevo. So it means they are married. And, of course, it is used as an adjective, as all passive participles. And it is in the plural. Έχουν δύο παιδιά, τον Στέφανο και τον Γιώργο. We still talk about Χριστός and Χριστίνα. And of course, we don't repeat their names and we also don't use the personal pronoun. The personal pronoun here would be in the masculine gender and in the plural, αυτή. But we don't need to use it because we have the ending of the verb. Έχουν. It is obvious that we talk about them. So, what do they have? They have two children. Δύο παιδιά. Δύο. A number. Παιδιά. Children. This is the object of the verb. So, it is in the accusative case. And after the comma, where we give the children's names, we still use the accusative case. Τον Στέφανο και and τον Γιώργο. Accusative case for the definite article and the names. Ο Στέφανος είναι γιος του Χρήστου και της Χριστίνας. 
ο Στέφανος είναι γιος του Χριστού και της Χριστίνας. So, the new word here is γιος, son. Ο Στέφανος, the subject of the verb in the nominative case, είναι, is, γιος, σαν, του Χριστού, genitive case, possession, the possessor is in the genitive case, του Χριστού και, and, της Χριστίνας. Again, genitive case, another possessor. Ο Στέφανος είναι εγγονός του Γιώργου. Ο Στέφανος είναι εγγονός του Γιώργου. So, if you remember from the previous lesson, we have another George in this family, the grandfather. It is very common in Greek families for the grandchildren to take the names of their grandparents. Εγγονός means grandson. Ο Χριστός και η Χριστίνα είναι οι γονείς του Στέφανου. Ο Χριστός και η Χριστίνα είναι οι γονείς του Στέφανου. Χριστός and Χριστίνα are Στέφανος parents. Γονείς means parents. And Of course, they are not only Stefano's parents, but they are also George's parents. So, ο Χριστός και η Χριστίνα είναι οι γονείς του Στέφανου και του Γιώργου. And as always, του Στέφανου και του Γιώργου, in the genitive case, they are the possessors of the parents. Ο Γιώργος είναι ο πατέρας της Χριστίνας και της Κατερίνας. Ο Γιώργος είναι ο πατέρας της Χριστίνας και της Κατερίνας. Again, the same relation here. Grandpa George has two daughters, Χριστίνα and Κατερίνα. So, George is the father of Χριστίνα and Κατερίνα. But what about George and Christos? Christos is George's son-in-law. In Greek, we have more specific words about these kinds of relations. We don't use phrases like in-law, but we have different words for every different relation. So, ο Γιώργος είναι ο πεθερός του Χρήστου. Πεθερός means father-in-law. So, your husband or your wife's father is your πεθερός. And Χριστός is George's son-in-law. Ο Χριστός είναι ο γαμπρός του Γιώργου. The new word here, son-in-law, γαμπρός. Γαμπρός also means groom and brother-in-law. So, at a wedding, we have the groom and the bride. Ο γαμπρός και η νύφη. And the word νύφη has also the same three respective meanings. Bride, daughter-in-law and sister-in-law. But pay attention here. Let's take the word γαμπρός. The family of the bride calls the husband γαμπρό. So, her father, her mother, her sister, her brother call her husband γαμπρό, their groom, if this helps you remember. And respectively, the groom's family calls his new wife their bride, νύφη. So, as you may have guessed from the original meanings of these two words, they cannot be used both ways. For example, the bride cannot call her husband's sister Nifi. It doesn't make any sense. There is a different word for that, but we'll see that later. Let's see a different relation here. Let's complicate it. Η Χριστίνα και η Κατερίνα είναι αδερφές. Χριστίνα and Κατερίνα are sisters. 
we have the noun αδερφή or αδελφή with a lambda instead of ρο. It's exactly the same thing. Αδελφή with a lambda may be slightly more formal. It means, of course, sister, and here it is in the plural. They are sisters. Είναι αδερφές or αδελφές. Είναι οι κόρες του Γιώργου. Είναι οι κόρες του Γιώργου. They are Χριστίνα and Κατερίνα, the daughters του Γιώργου of George. So, new word here, κόρη, daughter, plural, κόρες. Ο Χρήστος είναι ο γαμπρός της Κατερίνας. Ο Χρήστος είναι ο γαμπρός της Κατερίνας. So, γαμπρός again. Χρήστος is George's γαμπρός because he married his daughter, but he's also Κατερίνας γαμπρός because he married her sister. And now let's see how can Χρήστος call his wife's sister. Η Κατερίνα είναι η κουνιάδα του Χρήστου. Η Κατερίνα είναι η κουνιάδα του Χρήστου. Κουνιάδα. His wife's sister. Η Μαρία είναι η μητέρα του Χρήστου. Nothing strange here. We saw the word μητέρα, mother, in the previous lesson. Η Μαρία είναι η μητέρα του Χρήστου και του Νίκου. Η Μαρία είναι η μητέρα του Χρήστου και του Νίκου. Again here, nothing strange, nothing hard. We just add Maria's other son. Η Μαρία έχει δύο γιους και δύο εγγονούς. Η Μαρία έχει δύο γιους και δύο εγγονούς. Maria has two sons and two grandsons. So, we know all the words, we just use them in different sentences. Η Μαρία είναι η πεθερά της Χριστίνας. Η Μαρία είναι η πεθερά της Χριστίνας. We saw before πεθερός, father-in-law, and πεθερά, just a different feminine ending, mother-in-law. Η Χριστίνα είναι η νύφη της Μαρίας. Η Χριστίνα είναι η νύφη της Μαρίας. So, we talked about νύφη. It's exactly the same thing as γαμπρός in the feminine gender, of course. So, πεθερά και νύφη. Mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. Η Χριστίνα είναι η νύφη του Νίκου. Η Χριστίνα είναι η νύφη του Νίκου. Let's not forget that νύφη doesn't mean only daughter-in-law, but also sister-in-law. So, Χριστίνα is the sister-in-law of Νίκος, and if this helps you remember, she's the bride that married his brother. Ο Νίκος είναι ο κουνιάδος της Χριστίνας. Ο Νίκος είναι ο κουνιάδος της Χριστίνας. So you remember the word κουνιάδα, which means sister-in-law, my husband's or my wife's sister. So normally, my husband's or wife's brother is κουνιάδος, with a masculine ending. Let's go back to grandfather George. Ο Γιώργος έχει τρία εγγόνια. Ο Γιώργος έχει τρία εγγόνια. 
George has three grandchildren. You remember the noun egonos, grandson? Here we have the noun egoni with a yota and an accent on the second syllable from the last. Here it is in the plural, egonia, and it is a neuter noun. It means grandchildren. It includes granddaughters and grandsons. Έχει μία εγγονή και δύο εγγονούς. He has a granddaughter and two grandsons. So, we saw the neuter noun for grandchild, and now we see the feminine noun. Εγγονή, the accent on the last syllable, and ita. Και δύο εγγονούς and two grandsons in the plural and the accusative case. Let's see all three nouns here. Decline in both singular and plural. Egonos, masculine. Egoni, feminine. Egoni, neuter. Three different nouns. Η Κατερίνα είναι η θεία του Στέφανου. Η Κατερίνα είναι η θεία του Στέφανου. A simple sentence, Katerina is Stefano's aunt. We saw this word in the previous lesson. Thea. Ο Νίκος είναι ο θείος του Στέφανου. Ο Νίκος είναι ο θείος του Στέφανου. Θείος means uncle. It has the same stem as Thea. But of course, it has a masculine ending. Os. Ο Χριστός και ο Νίκος είναι αδέλφια. Ο Χριστός και ο Νίκος είναι αδέλφια. If you remember from before, we could also say αδέρφια with a ρο instead of λάμδα. Αδέλφια or αδέλφια is the neuter noun αδέλφι. In the plural. So again, there are three nouns for simplings a masculine, a feminine, and a neuter. Let's see them all together. Adelfos, Adelfi, Adelfi. The neuter noun is not very commonly used in the singular, but it's very common in the plural, like in this sentence. In Adelfia, they are brothers. We could use the same word if they were brother and sister. But if we talk about sisters, it would be better to use the feminine noun in the plural. Είναι αδελφές. They are sisters. Ο Χριστός είναι αδερφός του Νίκου. Ο Χριστός είναι αδερφός του Νίκου. A very simple sentence. Χριστός is the brother of Νίκος. Genitive case. Του Νίκου. Ο Στέφανος και η Σοφία είναι ξαδέρφια. Ο Στέφανος και η Σοφία είναι ξαδέρφια. Στέφανος and Σοφία are cousins. Again, exactly like αδελφός, αδελφή, αδέλφη, we have three nouns for cousins. Ξάδερφος, ξαδέρφη, with an ήτα, ξαδέρφη, with a ιώτα, νιούτερ. So, as you can see, the use is exactly the same as I explained for αδέρφια. We have a boy and a girl, and we use the plural of the neuter noun. Ο Στέφανος είναι ξάδερφος της Σοφίας. Στέφανος is Σοφίας cousin. So, we talk about Στέφανος, a boy, so we use The masculine noun, ξάδερφος. Again, here we can replace ρο with λάμδα. Η Σοφία είναι ξαδέρφη του Στέφανου. Σοφία is Στέφανος cousin. Here we talk about Σοφία, a girl, so we use the feminine noun, ξαδέρφη, with ενίτα. Η Σοφία είναι η κόρη της Κατερίνας. Η Σοφία είναι η κόρη της Κατερίνας. 
Sophia is Katerina's daughter. Nothing new here. Η Σοφία είναι η ανιψιά της Χριστίνας. Η Σοφία είναι η ανιψιά της Χριστίνας. Σοφία is Χριστίνας νης. Ανιψιά νης. And of course, since Σοφία is Χριστίνας νης, Χριστίνα is Σοφίας aunt. Η Χριστίνα είναι η θεία της Σοφίας. Again, nothing new here. Ο Στέφανος είναι ανιψιός του Νίκου. Στέφανος is Νίκος nephew. Again, three nouns, masculine, feminine and neuter. Ανιψιός, masculine, nephew. Ανιψιά, feminine, νης. Ανύψη, neuter. Let's see one more sentence with ανύψη, the neuter noun. Ο Στέφανος και ο Γιώργος είναι ανύψια του Νίκου. So, Νίκος has two nephews. We could use the masculine noun in the plural, ανυψή, but it is also very common to use the neuter noun in the plural, ανύψια. This could also include nieces too, if there were any. Είναι μια οικογένεια. Είναι μια οικογένεια. They are a family. Είναι συγγενείς. They are relatives. That was it, my friends. I hope this lesson helped you not only improve your vocabulary, but also improve your grammar your syntax, the use of the cases, and I hope that you learned a thing or two about the Greek family. We used the genitive case a lot in order to express the family relations between two or more people, so I think this lesson gave you the chance to practice the cases. Until next time, keep studying and don't forget to subscribe to Learn Greek with Lina for more lessons like this. If you did like this lesson, give it a thumbs up and check out my Facebook page Learn Greek with Lina. See you next time! Bye-bye!